Hey guys, it's Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. I'm here tonight to do a quick tutorial, and this one was a special request. It is for a sleeve that you can use to store your scroll bars. Um, it's for both when you have a project on it rolled up for storage, or if you know just empty bars as well. Since I only have one project on my Millennium Bars and I have more than one set of the side stretchers, I just hadn't needed to make one of these yet. So when I got the request, I sat down and I designed one. I sewed up my first prototype this morning and it worked really well, so I am here to do another one and show you as a tutorial. So the one that I made is this look well not so little. This is for my 28 inch bars. I saved the shorter bars to uh, do as a tutorial so it'll go a little quicker for you. But it's basically just a sleeve long enough for the bars with a little extra on top for a drawstring to add it to the top and a little doggle cord cinch to cinch it close and I added a handle to it as well because I like to hang these up when I'm not using them that way they take a little bit less storage space so the handle is actually sewn to one side on the inside and I'll show you how to do that, but if you if you don't plan on hanging this anywhere, you can easily just omit the handle. It'll be the same design, just no handle. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do real quick is to show you how I measured to cut the fabric. Alright. So I have a little diagram here. Let's see if I can do this this way. It's backwards for me, but you guys will be able to read it. All right, so the panel, I determine I need to cut two panels of fabric that are five inches across. And for my 24 inch bars, I added a inch and a half for the bottom width and three inches to accommodate the drawstring channel and a little bit of extra because it's better to have just a little bit more extra than tr be just a little bit short on this. So this is the length of the panels that I cut. So let me show you how I came up with these measurements. All right. So what I did is I took the bars and I measured around and I added, you know, I added some extra just so it's got a nice um, ease to it so you don't have the problem that I dealt with when I made the tote for the assembled frame. I sewed it almost exactly and it, then it's kind of tough to get it in and out. So, I just added some extra for ease and for seam allowances and all that. And, the, and um, I'll show you another reason in a little bit of why I added a little bit of extra to that measurement to go around. Now the one and a half inches for the bottom is because this measures one and a half inches right here. And when, when I put this, the rod into this bag, I'll show you why. I needed to just figure that little bit in. But the three inches for the top means that I used up an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch for this um, drawstring channel. And then um, just a little bit of extra on top. So let's go ahead and put the bars that I made this for into it, and I'll show you. 
what that looks like. So, my long 28 inch bars. I just get them started in there. And then because my handle is here, it's easy for me just to grab the handle or I could hold on to the hold on to the side if the handle wasn't there. And then it just slips down in like so. And then you just cinch that drawstring closed like so with the squeeze doggle. And then my handle is there so I can just hang it up wherever I want. See? Now the measurement for the half an inch on the bottom. This is a, f a flat, you know, bag. When you put the bars in, they use up a ha an inch and a half to create that flat bottom part. You could box these corners um, to create that bottom panel already, but it's just... I, I don't mind having the little corner pieces stick out for this storage case. If I was doing a tote, I might box the corners. And if you're interested in, in how to box these corners, um, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube to show you. You can do it internal, or you can do it external, where you just turn it up. However, to create that bottom panel, like so, and tack it right there. Or the internal, it's a little more complicated, but it's once you know how, it's easy to do. But I chose not to for this one, because it doesn't really matter on this. All right, so, and as you can see, once the bars are in, I have about this much extra on the top. So I'm not, I wasn't cutting it too close. I hate trying to sew a project and I measure too close to it and then it's just it's too too snug you know so as you can see this has some play so I like it I'm very happy with this, this design and it was very easy for me to do before I go and show you how I did this I am going to switch views on the camera and show you a few things about the bars. Now, ca caveat to this is if you have the bar parks for your Millennium Frames, um, those those work really well and what I'm about to show you probably won't, won't make any... you won't need to know, I guess. Um, but if you're like me and you try to get the bar parks and they were out of stock forever and a day and you just gave up and you figured out other ways of keeping your bars together um, I'm gonna show you information about what I figured out alright so I'm gonna switch views and we'll do that now alright the first tip I'm gonna show you is to keep these rods from sliding out every time you turn around if you don't have a project loaded onto these is just throw a little piece of painters tape on the end and that does the trick to keep them in there and then we're just going to move on to how do you keep the bars together most of you We'll be able to just use a rubber band, wrap it around, and be done with it. But I cannot do that. I live in the desert. Rubber bands don't last long here. Within a few months, they'll get brittle and they'll break. So for long-term or even medium-term storage for us, rubber bands are useless. So I had to come up with some other ideas to keep the bars together. Um, both when you don't have a project loaded on and when you do. So, first thing I tried is just using string. Um, temporary is a slip knot. You can uh, just pull this and it will come undone, but it's 
hard to get it you know real snug and then the other option is just do a knot this is long-term storage and a good idea because you can just snip that when you're ready to start on your project again um, but I didn't like using the string so I came up with another idea um, just a piece of elastic with one of these little squeeze doggles fed through the holes and then fed through the doggle and cinched down this works but the one thing I didn't like is getting the elastic through the doggo was kind of a pain in the butt and the way this is designed um, you're gonna always in order to get it undone set this down real quick is to get it to come back through out of the slots you have to undo one side and then slip it out so this didn't quite cut it for me I had to come up with another solution and that solution turned out to be these just a loop of 550 cord fed through the doggle and then knotted like so my husband does paracord bracelets so he has a bunch of this stuff lying around and I asked him for his scraps and so this is what I'm using just a little and then you just squeeze the doggle and cinch it down that way so I'm going to show you how I use this to hold these bars together so the most obvious way is to just get it around that part and cinch it down it's nice and tight that way um, but if you have a project on here and your fabric comes right up to that edge like I've I have on one of mine that didn't quite work so the other ways is to use the the slots to do it and um, just feeding it over this way it can work but it's also not very it's not very secure this can slide off pretty easily um, so I decided to use the slots to hold them together now in using the slots you're gonna have the bars in either of three configurations where the slots are lined up like that where they're both facing upwards or you might have one that is facing upwards and one's facing sideways the first one where they're lined up like so very easy I just take the loop I feed it through both I'll turn them the same way so they are perfectly lined up but you feed it through both you use the loop here to get it over that doggle and then pull it to where it's just on the very edge of that other side and cinch it down so now it's real tight right like that very nice the other easy way is if they're both pointing upward so do it this way and it would work no matter what but I will feed it down through and then back up get it through that around the doggle and work it so that it's snug and cinch it down so they're nice and nice and fixed easy now the other one is a little the third third way is a little tricky if one's pointing up and one's pointing sideways sorry 
didn't mean to make that loud noise. Um, this length works in such a way that I'll feed it through one and then I'll feed it through the other. Again, get the loop over the doggle and work it so that the loop is close to that one corner. Snug it down and then with the dog will get it fixed. And as you can see, if your bars are not loaded with a project, they'll just do that. But I'm trying to show you what it would be like if your bars were loaded with a project and they were in opposite configurations. So what we'll do is I will grab my longer length of loop and doggle and show you this way. So I go down through and I go through this way. Now if you were to just snug it down like so with a project on there so that it wouldn't flip like it did with the other one I just showed, you could just snug it like this. Um, but that will leave it cantered just a little bit. You see how they're just a little bit offset? And I, I didn't like that too much. I mean, it'll work. It'll work perfectly fine. But being OCD the way I am, I decided to try to figure one other way. So I get it like so, where it is snugged down and these are sitting even. And then I bring bring this loop back around, I feed the doggle underneath that one, get them even, and then I snug it. So now they're even and snug. A little bit more complicated, but very doable. So that's how I intend to keep my bars together when I want to store them either empty or with a project loaded. Alright, so I hope that was helpful to some of you folks. And now we're going to get to how I made the storage sleeve. So here is my two panels of fabric cut to 5 inches wide and 28 and a half inches long. And this is for the 24 inch bars. I've already joined the two panels together along one of the long edges using my serger. I love my serger, so I like to use it all the time. If you don't have one and you don't want to get one by now, you can easily do a straight stitch with your sewing machine. And it's your choice if you want to finish this seam allowance or not. If you don't, when you put your bars in and out, take them in, take them back out, or put them in, take them back out, you're, gonna, you're probably going to get little pieces of this fabric as it frays. But you could finish it by doing your straight stitch and then doing a zigzag across it. Whatever you choose to do, but like I said, I love my serger, so that's what I use stuff like this. The middle seam surged and then I ironed the seam allowance to one side so it'll lay flat. Then I took this back to the serger and I surged all the way around the perimeter. And the reason I did that is so that when I go to sew this other side and the bottom together I'll be using my sewing machine and a straight stitch and I will explain why I'm doing that instead of just serging this. But once I use the straight stitch, these edges will already be finished. So that's why I did it that way. Now what I need to do is just pick an end of my fabric, make sure I'm in frame. 
and we're going to create the channel for the drawstring. So I'm just going to turn over the edge a little bit. I don't have to be exact since I gave myself a good amount of excess wiggle room at the top. So I just need to iron that down. And then I'm going to turn it again a little wider to create the channel. If you choose not to add a handle, this only needs to be as wide as whatever, whatever um, cord you're putting through it to make it easy to, you know, feed through and move around, whatever. But because I'm adding a handle, I want this to be just a little bit wider to give myself space to attach the handle on there. So that looks to be about right. I'm going to iron that down nicely. Alright, so let it cool just a bit. Um, the handle, let me show you, cut it over here, is just a basic handle sewn from one of the scraps from when I cut the strips to make this. This is a very basic design. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, but I will, at the end of this, I will do a quick little rundown of how I made this um, to make it easy for you guys. You don't have to go searching for a tutorial for that. But I've already made it, and now that I have my um, turns ironed, let me go grab a board to put underneath of this and my pins and I'll show you how I add the handle. Alright, so I have a little cutting board that I can use on the ironing board. That way I don't catch my pins on the ironing board cover. So to add the handle, what I need to do is I need to grab it, turn it around so it's face up, and bring this um, panel that is going to create the channel out but not the little turn that you started at the beginning. So we're going to do that like so and then I'm going to add my handle here with a couple of pins. What I do is I take one end and you want a handle facing in at this point because when you sew your channel it's going to flip out. So you're going to face it in. I put the end of the handle almost flush with this, this edge right here and about a quarter of an inch away from the seam in the middle. And then I make sure it's kind of straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this is just for my personal use, so perfection, not absolutely necessary. So I put a pin right there to hold it in place. I didn't put a pin down here because I want to sew right here, and it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Now the handle, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it over like so, and then fold it back under. That way it's not twisted. It's got a nice curve to it. And this one I'm going to place it almost flush but about a half an inch away from this edge because I'm going to sew this at about a quarter of an inch seam when I close up this sleeve and that will leave me with about a quarter of an inch gap which will be even with this side. And again, no need to be absolutely perfect if this is for your own personal use, unless you are way more OCD than I am. So I'm going to put a pin right there to hold it in place. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, and I'm going to uh, sew a box and then an X through the box. That's your most standard way of adding a handle like this to a project. And my goal, the ridge that's right here that I iron in to show where my channel is going to go, 
I want to stay on this side of it. If I cross over it, it's going to be a bear to turn that channel in and sew it in place. So let's go to the sewing machine. All right, so we're at the sewing machine to sew the handle onto the project. And I have a coordinating thread loaded into the machine. And as always, I'm going to start with a little scrap of fabric. All right, so now I have a quick question for you guys. For those people who sew, can you sew with shoes on? Or do you have to kick your shoe off in order to work the foot pedal like me? All right, so the handle, like I said, I'm going to sew a box shape on it. What I do is, because it's not really important for me to be super neat with this, I don't need to worry about trying to keep the box without, you know, anyways. Normally, if I was doing this to be super neat, I would start my needle in the corner where I wanted the box to be. But since I don't need to do that, this is just for me, I get it about where I want to start start my first line and I just sew on and I go up to just a little bit before that ridge line All right I put my needle down turn my project 90 degrees put your presser back down and sew over to however big you want your box to be that way. Needle down, turn again. At this point, I'll trim off this little starting piece of fabric so it doesn't get in my way. Put presser down, sew to where I want the next turn to be. Again, lift 90 degrees, put it back down and sew across to where you started. Once you hit where you started, uh, needle down, turn it so that you are sewing from corner to corner on this guy of this little box that you just created. So here I go. And I get it right into that corner of that box and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it so I go straight back across to the other corner and then I'll sew the other side of the X across the box like so and when I get to that corner if I was being super neat, I would backstitch a little bit to secure that thread. But since I'm not trying to be super neat, just functional at this point, I'll turn it and sew off. Alright, so let me clip that thread real quick. Take the pin out. And I'll show you. It's now secure. Oops. Am I in frame? Oh, there we go. It's secured to that flap right there, just like that little box with an X through it. And I'm going to go do the other side off camera, and I will come back and show you the next step. All right? All right, so my handle's now sewn on, and I am going to sew the straight stitch across to secure the channel in place. And the reason why you put the handle on before you do the channel, because if you were to do the handle after, you'd sew through the whole thing, and then you wouldn't be able to get through your cord through. So doing it before 
leaves the channel open. Okay, so now let me get a straight stitch across. Start with a few stitches. Go back to secure your thread and then continue across. As you get close to the seam and the handles, slow down just a little bit because the thickness is going to become a little bit more difficult for the machine to get through. Um, the original seam, not so much, but this handle, if you, don't, if you go too fast, the machine might not like it. You don't want to, so just do it kind of slow, let the machine work the needle through all those layers. And then over here, I need to adjust this just a little bit, like so. Make sure that this handle is going to go under the presser foot, not get caught by it. So, just doing this by finger since I don't, I don't need it to be exact. It just needs to be functional for me. I get to the end and then I do a few back stitches to secure the thread and then across. Alright, so now let me snip those threads real quick and my extra little piece, my starter scrap, trim that off this side. And I usually immediately just throw it back in there and get it ready for the next seam. Alright, so my channel has been sewn. I am going to get this pinned in place and I will come back to the sewing machine and sew it. Alright, so I put right sides together and matched up these edges and I pinned it all the way along. I'm going to do a straight stitch across the bottom, up this side, and then I am going to stop sewing just a like a quarter half inch away from the channel. And that's one of the other reasons why I finished the edge so that I could stop my stitch here trying to stop a surged line at a certain point before you reach the edge is really difficult so for me anyways so that's why I finished these with a serge edge and now I'm going now I'm going to straight stitch and I'm going to end it just a little bit away from the channel and then of course this surged edge is a nice little finished edge for um, the channel sides like that good enough for you know, me, for my home use. And that was the easiest thing for me to do. So I'm going to sew now. In this project, I'm going to start. Like so. Get it just under the presser foot. I usually backstitch that first part, just makes the thread really secure. And sew across the bottom until I get not over the edge, but to the corner. Roughly about the same distance from this edge as I am from that edge. So then needle down, press your foot up, swivel it 90 degrees, press your foot down. And if you're a little bit off, you can kind of angle this a little ways and get it to where you need it. But I seem to be right on. And then I just start sewing up and move my pins when I get to them.
getting close to where I want to stop. I get it close to, eyeball it, and then I do a back up and forward and back up again because that's going to be a stress point. So you want to make sure it's nice and secure. And then what I can do is I can just needle down, press your foot up, press your foot down, and sew off. All right. Clip that thread, take that last pin out, and it is finished sewing. Now all I have to do is turn this inside out, or <laughs> right side out, and feed a cord through this channel. I'm going to add my little squeeze doggle to the end, and it'll be ready for me to put my 24 inch bars into. So I will be back when that is done. Alright, so here it is. Turned right side out, cord has been fed through the channel, fed through the squeeze doggle, and knots tied in the end to keep it from, you know, going back through the dongle. And as you can see, the handle doesn't interfere with the drawstring at all. That's why we did it in the sequence that we did. So now, one thing I want to mention uh, before I move on is I haven't talked about it before, and I learned it during my quilting class. And I do it automatically, so that's why I haven't mentioned it. Whenever I sew a seam, whether it's with my sewing machine or my serger, before I do anything else, before I open it or I turn it inside out, right side out, whatever, I iron over that seam and that causes the thread to flatten and it locks it in even better to, um, to the fabric. So I did that before I turn this right side out. Now I will grab the bars and throw them into my new storage sleeve. And as you can see, like I said before, I've snugged them up with my little loops and doggles. And that's one reason why I added a little bit more um, ease to this width is so that the, the profile of the doggle wouldn't become an issue. So get it started and it goes. I use the handle to um, help but you can always just grab the edge of it if you didn't add your handle. And up it goes into the sleeve and then I just grab my doggle, squeeze it, and cinch that drawstring closed. So my bars or my project on my bars is now secure in its storage sleeve and the little handle I added I can hang that anywhere I want it if I've got hooks on the wall or hooks off a shelving unit or I can even hang it on that little hook on the side of the Millennium's Necessaire stand all right so now what I will do real quick is demonstrate how to make that handle because you were interested in knowing that. I have a scrap piece of fabric. The one that I used for my project was started out at 10 inches long. This is a little bit longer um, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. So get my iron up to temperature, so wait for that for just a few seconds. Okay, to do to do one thing. 
Right, like I said before, this is something that I, I learned on YouTube. So it'll be easy enough for you to find if if what I show you doesn't make sense. Alright, so my iron is ready. What you do is you fold it wrong sides together, matching up your edges, and iron it. So that you make that nice ridge of a turn. I'll let it cool for a second or two. Then open it back up. You fold this edge into the middle. That's why you created that ridge so you can see where the middle of your fabric is. You fold it in. Get it close to but don't go over. If you go over that ridge it just makes it a little difficult to work with. But there we go. I try to get the edge without going into that ridge but you know if you do just fold that back over like so and reinforce the middle ridge for you to see. Turn it around do the same thing on the other side. Fold it in, very close to the center but not over, like so. Kind of press it with my hand to keep it from popping up too bad. And I get the iron down there and iron it flat. Alright, so now you can fold it back in half with those edges turned in and this is what the width of your strap is going to be. Now before I sew it I do a couple more steps because at this point you've got raw edges right there. I could have surged that edge and I wouldn't really worry about it but I'm going to show you a different different way of dealing with that um, if you don't have a serger. What you can do is open this back up, like so. You can see it wants to fold back, you know, in, which is good because then it'll do that when you need it to. I turn this edge about a quarter of an inch, finger press it, and then iron, iron it flat. Get it good. Alright, so now by doing that I've obliterated these iron marks, but they're easy to put back in because they're still here. So I just fold it back in using, it just kind of goes back in because you still have iron lines along the rest of the piece, like so. So I get it back in, and I iron that flat. Alright, so now what I'll do is I'll open it up for the other side. Turn that about a quarter of an inch, and iron it flat. And then let it refold back to the center, like so. And finesse it just a little bit. And then iron flat there. And then I fold this getting those edges to match up. Push it down with my hands and then iron it flat. Right. And if it goes a little wonky you can adjust and re-iron like so. Iron it 
Alright, so it looks good. Now, I don't think I need to go to the sewing machine and show you how to do this because basically it's just a straight stitch. What you'll do is you'll run a stitch along here, close the seam up here along this side, do the end, and turn again, and sew down this um, edge right here, which is just your folded part, but it makes it a nice um, square, looks real neat when you do it that way, strap. Uh, what I'll do real quick is I'll go and sew it up and then I'll show it to you a little bit closer. Alright? Alright, so the strap is sewn. As you can see, I just did like a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. And it gives you a nice, even, symmetrical looking strap. Real easy to make. If I was trying to do a professional job, I would have started my needle in a corner in a quarter of an inch and ended it there. But because I was just doing this for myself, I... Yep, there you can see. I sewed on from one edge, I went around and I sewed off the other edge. But then again, this ends up on the inside of your project bag, so it doesn't really matter to me at this point. So that's how I made the strap. Alright, so before I go to my closing remarks, I just want to do a couple more comments about this. See how easily it comes off your bars? Like I said before, if you don't need the handle for hanging or, you know, you just don't want it, you can omit that. If you don't want to do a drawstring closure, you could make this even easier. Instead of doing the channel, you could just do a nice hem turn or even just a surged edge on this. And instead of needing to leave these edges open like that, you could sew right up to there. And then this opening right here, uh, you could put Velcro along there to close that up to keep, you know, dirt and dust out and pets. <laughs> so it is, could be simplified even more. But this is de the design that I decided was going to work best for me. Alright, so I will see you back at my desk to do my closing remarks. Alright, so that is how I made my storage sleeve for my, lin my millenni l Millennium Bars. Yeah, I can speak English. <sighs> yes. My Millennium Bars now have storage sleeves, and I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know, and I will be happy to answer them. So you guys have a great stitchy evening, day, week, whatever, till I see you again. <laughs> Bye. Mm -hmm.